Hey, how are you doing? Today, you're going to learn the first lesson of our speaking part three, talking about memory. It is also the last part of the air speaking test. It's very challenging, I know, but it comes with a chance to demonstrate your language skills to the examiner. I hope you will love this section as much as I do. Are you ready? Here we go. Since this is the first lesson of I am speaking part three in this course, let's talk about the overview of this part. First of all. I am speaking part three is a two-way discussion between you and the examiner. It lasts between four and five minutes. The examiner asks you questions related to part two topics. Therefore, no need to be surprised if you see some lessons associated with I am speaking part two in this section. Based on those speaking part two topics, the examiner will ask some questions accordingly. Of course, they are very different from part one questions. Part three questions are about general, abstract topics, not personal ones. It means that you should give your opinions rather than talk about yourself. In fact, this is your opportunity to show the examiner the full range of your language. Make sure you don't miss it. I think that's quite enough for the overview, right? Let's get down to business. Look at the following part three question. We've been talking about memory. What methods do people use to help themselves remember things? And here is Kim's answer. That's easy. I use a notepad. What do you think about the answer? Let me know your thought by ticking three of the boxes below. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 seconds to accomplish this. Have you finished? Let's have a look at the answer. Obviously, we should tick boxes 2, 3, and 4. The reason to tick box number 2 is that this answer is too personal, not general. Remember, you should give your opinions rather than talk about yourself in a speaking part 3. In addition, box number 3 ticked because this answer is too short. How can you prove your language ability by just saying those two short sentences? You may consider speaking more by giving reasons and examples, explaining something, comparing this to that, agreeing or disagreeing, etc. Finally, you should take box number four because the answer only gives one method while the question asks for many. That means the examiner wants to hear more than just one option. By talking about a few more approaches, you can at least extend your answer three times longer. Let's move on to the next assignment. Work in pairs. Look at the answer below to the part three question in the previous exercise. Completed using the ideas in these pictures. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 seconds to accomplish this. Have you finished? Listen and compare the speaker's answers with your own. Well, some people use a calendar and others use a diary. But I think if you're really busy, you'll make a list, maybe on your iPhone if you have one. Or sometimes you see a note on the back of someone's hand. I hope you did everything correctly. One more important thing. You usually have to give your opinions about some general, abstract topics, not personal ones, in a speaking part three. That means you often have to talk about some other people or people in general. Let me give you one example. 
Do you know that the words some people in this answer refer to people in general? Now, underline some other words that refer to people in general as well. I'm going to give you around 10 to 15 seconds to accomplish this. Have you finished? Let's take a look at the answer. You can use the following words to refer to people in general. Others, your, you, your, you, and someone. Practice using these words frequently as I can assure you they will be surprisingly helpful in our speaking part three. That's it for today. I hope you found this lesson informative and helpful. I see you in the upcoming video.